Cinder de la Doom Summons the Shadow Fiends by William Todd Rose. Dedicated to anyone whose inner child may have spent a little time in the form school. Chapter 1 A full moon peeked out from behind the clouds, tinning the cemetery with a bluish glow. Concrete angels looked down upon the staggered rows of tombstones, their once serene expressions pulled by shadows into masks of concern. With wings unfurled and arms outstretched, they no longer seemed to welcome the bereaved with comforting embraces. Instead, it looked as though the statues were warning people away from the gravel path snaking through the graveyard, their palms turned outward in the universal sign for stop. Yet, warn was all they could do. With rebar skeletons anchoring their feet to pedestals, they were unable to glide down and physically block the path with their imposing presence. So, they simply watched through chiseled eyes as the figure of an 11-year-old girl crested a mole. Cinder de la Doom's combat boots crunched over the gravel and moonlight winked on the silver onk dangling from her ear. Except for a shock of dusty white bangs, her hair was black and spilled over the puffy shoulders of her favorite morning dress in an avalanche of loose curls. The collar was tied against her neck and lacy black gauze veiled buttons shaped like ivory skulls. The satiny fabric swished and rustled as the girl walked, a tin lunchbox decorated like a Ouija board swinging in her hand while her eyes scanned the cemetery for any signs of movement. As always, Cinder wore her contact lenses. Her vision was perfect, so the flimsy plastic discs were purely cosmetic. The pupils were twice as large as her real ones, making it seem as though the young girl was impervious to dilation as she passed through pools of light and shadow. The irises were baby blue streaked with violet striations, and thin bands of silver ringed each one. With pale skin and black lipstick, these lenses were the only touches of color in her melancholy facade, and they always made the girl feel like a vampire queen, which seemed appropriate for the undertaking she embarked upon that fateful night. Cinder paused at a grave where the dirt was still piled in a hump, so freshly dug that a permanent headstone had yet to be set in the earth. Crouching, the girl flipped the latches on her lunchbox and removed a velvet pouch from within. The aroma of lilies and carnations blossomed in the cool air as she pushed aside wreaths and fingernails painted black scratched furrows into the loose earth. With the dirt clenched in her hand, the girl relaxed her grip just enough for it to stream out the bottom of her fist and into the awaiting pouch. The process had to be repeated five times before the bag was halfway filled, and only then did she pull the dark ribbon threaded through the bag's lip, cinching it closed. With the last of her supplies gathered, she stood and continued her midnight stroll. However, this was no leisurely walk through a garden of the dead. If her mother peeked into Cinder's room and discovered pillows and blankets piled beneath the duvet instead of her daughter, there would be hell to pay. She'd been lectured countless times about sneaking out in the middle of the night, and the most recent scolding had concluded with the threat of having bars permanently affixed to the bedroom windows. Mrs. De La Doom was not in the habit of making the hollow ultimatums a fact which was not lost on Cinder. And yet, there she was, slinking through a graveyard as midnight rapidly approached. It was Wilhelmina Blackthorne's fault, really. Cinder had been communicating with the spirit for over a month, asking questions to the executed witch and painstakingly transcribing the answers as they were spelled out across the surface of her lunchbox letter by letter. Eventually, the conversation had turned to conjuring, 
a subject Wilhelmina could discuss at great length. Cinder had learned how to brew a love potion using thyme, cinnamon, and a slice of apple. She had been schooled in the art of scrying and taught a spell that would ensure misfortune and failure for her enemy's endeavors. But of all the things Wilhelmina had shared, only one had truly captured the girl's imagination. And that bit of arcane knowledge had set Cinder on a path which culminated in the events of this very night. The little girl followed the path until she came to a stone mausoleum. An alcove extended from the structure with Greco-Roman columns adorning either side. Above the entryway, the words De La Doom had been carved into the stone, and as she passed beneath them, Cinder took a deep breath. Part of her wanted to turn away to retrace her steps and slip back into bed before the clandestine outing had been discovered. She tried to tell herself she was simply afraid of incurring her mother's wrath. She had only recently been released from a two-month grounding for decapitating her extensive Barbie doll collection and hanging the severed heads from the ceiling with fishing twine. Desecrating the family crypts would surely carry a much heavier sentence. That explanation, however, couldn't explain the trembling which passed through Cinder's hands so severely that she had to try four times before she could fit the key into the iron gates rusty locked. Or how the darkness within the tomb caused chills to creep up her arms as the hinges screeched like a tortured soul. Her stomach felt as if it had shriveled to the size of a walnut, and her heart pattered so quickly she could feel the pulse throbbing against the neckline of her dress, a neckline which suddenly seemed too tight and constricting. Like the noose which took Wilhelmina's life. She tossed her head to the side as if she could fling the world thought from her mind, yet the seed had already been sown. What if Wilhelmina Blackthorn wasn't the persecuted wise woman she claimed to be? What if she'd actually deserved to be put to death? Sender's imagination invoked images of a soot-stained cauldron poisoning the air as foul-smelling steam curled from its contents, of a haggard crone cackling as a baby's cries cut through the crackle and pop of firewood of something dark and serpentine slithering between the trees, snapping branches and then hissing words in a long forgotten language. Don't be such a baby. Cinder spoke aloud in the hopes that her own voice would banish her fears. You've already blogged about this. What will people think if you don't go through with it? You'd probably lose half your followers right off the bat. The silence following her pep talk was so complete that Cinder wondered if she had actually spoken at all. No insects chirped in the strip of woods bordering the cemetery. No owls hooted from nearby trees. There was only the silence of the dead and all the weight it carried. She'd come this far, and chances were nothing would happen. She'd laugh at herself as she composed her post, contrasting the nauseating twinges of dread with the ridiculous nature of the failed experiment, and that would be that. Perhaps if she'd been older, Cinder would have realized that fear served a purpose. Perhaps maturity would have taught her to listen to her instincts. Perhaps it would have ended then and there. But she was, after all, merely a child. So, without further question, the young girl crossed the threshold of the crypt and was instantly devoured by the darkness within. So, what awaits Cinder in the darkness of her family's tomb? And 
exactly what instructions has Wilhelmina Blackthorne, the executed witch, given the girl? What undertaking is she embarked upon on this night? I suppose we will find out more tomorrow in Chapter 2 of Cinder de la Doom Summons the Shadow Fiends. Good night.